Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm filming part two of cooking foods based off the colors of the Hogwarts houses. And so the Hogwarts house that I'm doing today is Slytherin. So the colors of Slytherin are green and silver. And so when I was thinking of these colors, I was like, okay, okay green is super easy because since I'm vegan, most of the food that I eat is green anyway. But then I was like, what possible food could I make that's silver that's edible? And the only thing that could come to mind was sprinkles. That's like the only silver edible food. So for the main meal, I'm going to be making a kale pesto pasta with some toasted pine nuts and toasted breadcrumbs on top. And then for the dessert, so on my Explore page, I have been seeing a ton of people eating these weird like candy coated fruits and they look so good and so crunchy. So I decided I'm going to try and make green grapes coated with that like melted sugar and some silver sprinkles inside. So that's green and silver, very Slytherin-esque. And let's see how that goes because I've never done anything with hot melted sugar. I've always been scared of burning myself. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Hopefully I don't burn myself or burn my kitchen down. So let's get started. So these are all the ingredients that I'm going to be using in the pesto. So I have some kale. I have one clove of like elephant garlic. It's super big, so I'm probably only gonna use half of it. Then I have some olive oil to blend into it, some spaghetti, some pine nuts, some iodized sea salt, breadcrumbs, and two packs of fresh basil. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is start boiling my pasta so that can cook. And then in the water that I'm boiling my pasta, I'm also gonna put in um, this kale. I just wanna wilt it a little bit before I blend it into the pesto, because if I don't, I think the pesto will be a little bitter. So yeah, I'm just gonna put this in the same hot water as the pasta and just cook it like normal. Yeah, I just filled the pot about halfway and I'm gonna put it on the stove, put the heat on high all the way and then I'm going to put in like a lot, a lot of salt. So you want the water to taste like the ocean. I'm sure you probably already know that. I'm going to wash my kale a little bit. So I don't think I'm gonna use this whole bunch of kale because I'm only cooking for like one person and I don't even know if I could fit all this kale into my little food processor. I think I'm just gonna do this half of the bunch. And so when you're like cooking kale, you wanna de-stem it because this stem is like super hard. And even if you like cook it, it won't get tender enough to eat really. So I'm just gonna like scrape all of the kale off the stem. I think, I think this is enough kale, honestly. It looks a lot right now, but then once I put it in the boiling water, it's gonna shrink quite a bit. All right, so now that the water is boiling, I'm gonna throw in the pasta and the kale and yeah. Okay, so to the water, I'm gonna throw in about half a box of pasta. Just dump the pasta down into the water so all the pasta is covered. To the top of the water, I found that if you add just a little bit of any type of oil, it'll stop the water from boiling over. I think something about it counteracting the starch, maybe, don't quote me. To the boiling water, I'm also going to add the kale. Just throw it in there and leave it in there for a few minutes. It's already wilting a bunch and getting super small. So I'll take it out in just a few minutes. Once I feel that it's cooked enough, I'm gonna spoon it out into the food processor just so I can get ready to start blending it with all the other pesto ingredients. Just being in there a few minutes, see it's already pretty wilted. So I'm just gonna take it right out, let the water drain off. You can leave a little bit of water cause it's like good pasta water. Okay, so now I have my kale drained in here and I just washed all of the fresh basil. So I just did two packs of fresh basil. So I'm just gonna shake it out and dry it off a little bit. I don't want the pesto to be like watery or anything. Oh wow, look at that. It has like a, a little flower. I'll keep that for the top. Now I'm gonna throw it into the food processor. I'm gonna tear off the leaves and like leave the um the stems because i don't think the stems are very necessary let's check and see if the pasta is done will it stick to the wall <laughs> i mean that's the test to see if it's done right oh okay maybe not <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not exactly. Okay, well, it's not sticking. So maybe it's not done. Oh, you, I heard a little snap and you can kind of see. I don't know if you can, but there's like a little bit of white in the middle of it. Okay, so my camera cut off earlier and I drained the pasta. So that's just sitting there in the sink. Um, and I started blending the pesto. So the pesto has two packs of basil. I just washed them and ripped off the leaves and it kept the stems like out of it. Then I put in the wilted kale and a bunch of olive oil and just a little bit of this knob of garlic. See, not the whole thing was used. And so I'm just gonna continue blending it. I added about a handful of pine nuts. Really unfortunate that I stopped filming, but yeah, I'm gonna keep blending. Oh wow, now it tastes good like pesto. This looks so good, I'm so excited. All right, so my camera cut off, but I just put some olive oil in a pan and then some panko breadcrumbs and some pine nuts. And I'm just gonna keep these moving. See, they're already getting nice and golden brown. I just want these really nice and toasted and crunchy. So the pine nuts and um, breadcrumb mixture looks gorgeous and beautiful golden brown. Look at that, it looks so good. And so I think I'm about done. Look at that gorgeous, vibrant green pesto, nice and creamy without having to add like Parmesan or anything. So I'm going to take the pasta that I drained and put it back in that pot, mix in the pesto, and then plate it up. Nice and thick and vibrant green, it looks beautiful. Love that noise. <laughs> Make sure all of the noodles are coated with this delicious pesto. And look at that gorgeous pot of pesto pasta. Oh my God. Look at how beautiful that is. I tried my best. Look at this gorgeous bowl of pasta. This just looks so amazing. I cannot wait to try it. That is amazing. That is the best pesto pasta I have ever made. With the breadcrumbs and pine nuts on top, it is super crunchy and nutty and like buttery almost because of the olive oil. Wow. All right, so it is now time to make the candy coated grapes. I have all my ingredients laid out. I have one cup of water, two cups of sugar. I have my bamboo, bam, I can't even say it, bamboo, bamboo, bamboo skewers. Um, some silver sprinkles and then I have all my grapes and the first step is putting the grapes on the skewers so since these grapes are pretty big I'm gonna be putting two grapes per skewer and then I'm gonna dip it into the hot sugar water mixture and yeah All right, so now that I have all of the grapes on the bam bamboo skewers, <laughs> I am going to start heating up the sugar and the water in the pan. And so I just let that boil until it reaches 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And then that's apparently the hard crack phase. <laughs> like hard crack, like, like it's hard like candy, like it cracks. So yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm gonna boil it to 300 degrees and then dip in the grapes and that's about it. Hopefully I don't <laughs> catch catch the paper towel on fire. Let's, let's not put that negative energy out into the world. Two cups of sugar. All right, so it just got to 300 degrees, which is the hard crack phase, and I'm super scared. So it's grind time. Time to coat these grapes in molten sugar. Oh God, this is so scary. So it looks like it's coated, and then just put it right on the parchment. Oh, this is so scary. Now I'm wondering what'll happen when I add the sprinkles. Hopefully, well, see, it's starting to turn like, uh. Okay, I gotta hurry. Okay. 
Oh good, so the sprinkles stayed in it. It's like starting to burn, I can kind of smell it. Please do not give me burning sugar. All right, so now I have a pot of burning sugar. But I did it, oh my God, I freaking did it. That was so scary. <laughs> ah! Oh my God, it's like, it's hard. I'm like freaking out if you couldn't tell. Look at these beauties. And you hear that crunch? And look at this one. It's got those beautiful little silver sprinkles in there. It looks so slithering. Oh my God. I feel like a chef. I'm a candy maker. Like what? And now here is what we've all been waiting for. I'm gonna eat one of these. I've been seeing people eat these on my Instagram timeline for months. So now I finally get to try it. And I'm so excited. Here we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you hear that crunch? That's so good. It's like really crunchy on the outside. And then the grape itself is like juicy and super sweet and a little bit warm. I guess these would be good if you put them in the fridge after, but this is so good. It, it kind of hurts the roof of your mouth a little bit, but it tastes good. All right, everyone, that is the end of this week's video. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And in the next two videos, I'll be making foods based off of the Gryffindor and Hufflepuff houses. So be ready for that. I'll see you then.